So if you're new to React and you're just getting started and you want to learn React from scratch, well, this video is absolutely for you. In this video, I'm going to learn all the JavaScript prerequisites that you're going to need before jumping and learning React. Prerequisites are obviously going to help you a lot understand React. It's going to make it easier for you to understand the different concepts. And of course, this video is going to give you only the prerequisites that you're going to need throughout a React. So I've been developing with React for more like four years now, and it's been like my profession. I've been going through a lot of React projects. So I'm going to give you only what you're going to need and only what you are going to see throughout the course and learning React. And that is going to make it a lot easier for you to fully master React. So now to get started, we want to start with the most important, like the most interesting that you're going to face a lot when learning React to like the least important, but they're all actually important. So what we got in here is actually we got functions, arrays, DOM, objects, and variables. So I'm going to start with functions in here because they are literally everywhere and React is just all about functions. Components are functions and just like they return different JSX that gets rendered later on. Now for components in here, what we got, the first thing is just like a function. So to declare a function, of course, you got a const, you just do a function name in here. And you can e use the error syntax. This is called the error syntax because it got an error in here. And of course, just like takes props and it returns some GSX. Of course, the second most easy one, what I love myself in here, and the best way to declare a function is just to say function, give it a name, takes props, and obviously, it's going to return a GSX in here. And of course, you can do any manipulation that goes into the components right over here. This is basically what a React component is. I'm not going to go into details of it. But a React component is basically a function. So this is simply how you declare a function pretty easy. So if you were to run this function, so this like my components in here is going to return a value, which is just a GSX. And you're going to learn about GSX later on once you jump into React. So GSX is basically just a value, it's just like going to be an object interpreted right over here. And of course, the object has a children like whatever you return and everything. So this is literally what the value is, of course, any function would return a value. And in react, most of the times for your component, you are going to be returning a GSX or like an HTML kind of a syntax that will be lent rendered. There's all kind of functions in JavaScript, but because literally JavaScript has tons and tons of different functions and compositions between functions. And one of these like important kind of like techniques of like composing functions together is called fun functions. And yes, from its name, it's pretty fun actually to spell. So it's it's pretty awesome. So what fun fun functions is it actually appearing components, and it actually can go ahead and return a new function. Let's go ahead and like can be like interpreted later on and, and you know, of course, executed. So for example, we've got this parent component here that go ahead and checks props, if do magic, whatever parameter you're going to pass in here, it's going to return another function, which is an arrow function, same thing as a regular function, and it's going to be returning a div later on, otherwise just else in here. And once you execute that you're going to have a value and this value when you see this lambda in here, that means this value is a function. And of course, once you execute that, you're going to have the same return value of it. And if you do like this execution right over here, we are going to be able to see the same actual return value when we once we did on the top functions in here. The second most important prerequisite that you need to master are arrays. So JavaScript arrays are always a fundamental thing to learn because they are just like a very important data structure to hold data, to fetch data from RESTful APIs and to manipulate data of all sorts. So for arrays in here to declare an empty array, obviously, just use this, you know, two brackets in here, which is the simplest way to do it. Second, for example, to declare an array of obviously you got these two brackets. And of course, you can have anything inside of an array from objects to numbers. But in here, we got strings, of course, you can put literally anything because arrays are dynamic, and they support multiple types. And obviously, in here, once we like there is different type of functions that you would want to use. And in my opinion, these are the most used and needed array methods that you're going to be facing a lot when learning react. So for example, the first one is the filter, which is going to take a callback in here, you're going to have every single brand, which is just a string, and you can filter certain brands on certain criteria. like this brand is going to only just going to go ahead and return everything but Apple, and this is what is going to return over here. For example, for the slice method, the slice is going to allow you to slice or only get a part of an array and take, for example, the first part from zero index from Nike to like a and already get the sport stuff. So only sport brands is going to just go in an output from zero to two. And this is what is going to get us So it's going to slice the part of an array and put it into a new array. And for includes it actually allows you to check 
if in value does it exist on array or not. For example, do brands not include Apple and is Apple there? So it's going to return true because Apple is there. For example, if you do a typo, it's going to change to false because this value doesn't exist. And the other major, absolutely very important kind of technique, which is destructuring arrays. So arrays destructuring is actually taking an array and destructuring its values into a set of variables in here each one, of course, just like, you know, you have to get the order right in order to get the same thing. So for example, first brand in Nike, Adidas, Netflix, which is the same order as we declared it up here. This would be very useful for later on when you're using React hooks, because React hooks is just about all returning arrays and using like arrays and destructuring them. And this is going to make your code look a lot more cleaner rather than just accessing it with actual indices of the current values. For variables, you want to make sure you never use var keyword to declare any variable like anywhere again. So for example, here we've got this var variable inside of a function. And since the var keyword is like a hoisted keyword, and whenever like you declare this, it's going to be like opening and defined even before you actually define or declare this. Now, when it comes to let in here, it's actually much, much better because here for let only when you declare that variable, it's going to be available in here, for example, but before declaring that it's going to return a reference error once you try to reference an undeclared variable. Now, the short answer is always try to use let and const and absolutely avoid var in here. And of course, you can check out more Google about like hoisting and all these issues. But short answer is var creates more more bugs. And it's actually going to make it a lot harder to debug your problems and your react code compared to let and const. And the problem occurs again, with both of these variables or the var keyword in here, where you can actually redeclare the same variable name in here with no problem, it's just going to replace the old var value, which can actually create a lot of errors and a lot of unexpected behaviors. While compared to let in here, once you try to redeclare a variable that has already been declared, you're going to get a syntax error like bar or any variable has already been declared. Now for objects, we're all familiar with how to declare a basic JavaScript object. This is just like the fundamental to get started with JavaScript. And obviously, you absolutely need that in react because you are everything you're going to be dealing about or with in react ecosystem is going to be like objects and like arrays of objects. So you have to actually like go through this in details. So for example, in here, we got this brand object, which is like represent a simple brand, for example, has a name, a rank, like each rank in here is just a number and a value of like evaluation of this particular company in here. So the first thing most important one, which is like destructuring objects, the same way as we did before with arrays or destructuring arrays. Now we are actually destructuring objects, which is the same way. Now instead of using brackets, we just use the object notation in here, which is the curly braces. And we just say the object's name in here. And of course, we need to give it the exact property name in here or key name in here for it to get the value. Now once you, if you do like name in here, it's going to have the name. For example, if we do rank in here, you're going to have rank like printed out. And this is actually very easy just go ahead and destruct and get access to the underlying properties rather than just going the old way. Also for the object constructor in here it has two main very important methods to use like the values method, which it takes an object and returns all the values of that object like Apple and like number one, one trillion all going to be returned in here, as well as the keys. So the keys function is going to take the same thing and but it's going to return the keys in this case. And last but not least for the DOM in here, what you need to learn about the DOM, obviously, you are already familiar with the DOM manipulation, because you should already be familiar with JavaScript and DOM in general. But the most important part that you need to focus in here before jumping to react is actually, for example, using the document properly and knowing the underlying methods of the documents, like get the elements by ID, and those kind of like methods that allows you to access different elements on a web page. So for example, in here, we got this like handle key press function in here that what it takes is going to get an event in here, which is just like react events, you're going to be learning about that a little bit later on, or it's going to be more of like a DOM events. And of course, it's going to have a key. So you check, oh, if it's an escape, you can do anything in here. But of course, you need to know that they're using to do this or to register this particular function to run on the escape key callback, you need to call the document .add event listener and you do like key press, for example, and handle key press, you can choose any different kind of like 
events from mouse to keyboard and different stuff. So you can go ahead and like use that properly. So to see a real world example in react where we can use, you know, for example, the methods of arrays, and the first most important method here, which is actually the map method, I haven't showed that before, because like it better to show this on an example. So the map in here, what it does, it basically takes like, in like whatever array in here, the value of the array is going to give it on a callback. And every single time you can transform this and you can return a different different output. For example, in here, we get the brand, and we're going to return a GSX that's going to be rendered. But of course, we're going to integrate the brand name into this GSX. So this will return and render something like Nike, Adidas, Netflix, and Apple. And this is why this is so important. And also the other most important method, which is the find method in here, allows you to find a specific value from an array and extract it depending on a criteria. For example, we do brand rank only get me the first rank brand, which is here, for example, Apple, and it's going to return Turn the name in here, and it's going to be rendered among this. And of course, we just like, you know, wrap this with curly braces, and this is just like a react kind of thing. And of course, we get that like highest or like, sorry for the typo in here. So highest ranking brand, which is going to be Apple because we got the rank one. And for example, for the DOM manipulation, we got this simple components, which renders the same thing in here. But instead, we got this use effects, which of course, you're going to be learning about this later on. But what we need to focus on is the add event listener. So we do an add event listener. And whenever we go into this web page and click enter, we're going to get this lot in here because this is exactly what we're doing to get that using the DOM and the ad event listener. And for more prerequisite and just like taking that further and learning everything, there's this course in here, which is a 30 days of react on GitHub. It's completely free. And what you can do with this is actually just go ahead and run the prerequisite. So inside of this, there's like multiple days that you can learn. And there's a prerequisite section, which is like the day one. And here has everything that you want and literally everything that you would need to master and start learning React.